All right, so last week or earlier, no, last week, when we started talking about circles, in number one, we talked about central angles. What is this? So, like, if you look at number one, it's an example of a central angle. What is a central angle? Well, if I just had to guess based on the it's word, the center, it's, an angle, it's an angle that, that, angle that it the vertex is, is in the yeah. center. Okay, yeah. the center of the circle is the vertex of the angle. So in this case, this angle would be BAC, and we know that angle BAC, because arc BC has a measure of 140. What's the measure of BAC? Also 140. It's the same, right? If it's a central angle, that means that if this is 140, the angle is also 140 degrees. So those two things are the same. If you're working on something else, please put it away. Okay, so what we're going to talk about today are inscribed angles. And inscribed angles, there's three examples right there of inscribed angles. If you had to describe to me what those look like, inscribed angles, how are they different than central angles? The vertex is not in the center, where is it? Somewhere else on the circumference of the circle, right? Somewhere else on the outside of the circle. So in this case, it's always angle ABC in this example. It's all angle ABC. All of them are inscribed, and they might go through the center. They might go around the center, but they don't have to, okay? They just have to have one vertex on one side of the circle, and then the other Endpoints are somewhere on the circle as well. So all three parts of the angle are on the circle. They're on the outside of the circle. So the relationship between an inscribed angle and the arc is half. The angle measure is equal to half of the arc length. So for instance, if this arc were 60 degrees, how big is angle ABC? Uh, 30. 30 degrees, because it's half of it. So if it's an inscribed angle, it's half of it. It goes across the whole circle and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So it goes from 60 to 30. So then if this angle were 40, how big is the arc? 80. 80. And if this arc is 25, how would you find the angle? Divide by 2. Divide by 2. So 12.5 degrees. Okay, so those are all degrees because we're talking about angles and arcs still. So it's still marked with degrees. Okay, if angle, or I'm sorry, if arc AC is 100, what's the measure of ABC? Arc AC is 100 degrees. What's the measure of ABC? 50. 50. Yep. Wait. So it's a half of everything? If it's an inscribed angle, it's half. If it's a central angle, it's just the same. So what we've done so far, all of them have been central angles, which means the vertex is at the center of the circle. Inscribed angles means the vertex is somewhere on the outside, and that means it's just half of the arc that it intersects. Okay, so it's half of the arc length that it intersects. So if it's angle ABC, then the arc is angle A, or I'm sorry, then the arc is AC, and B is the vertex. Okay, so in this case, Number one says, find the measure of angle RST. So the first thing you have to do is figure out where RST is. So here's RST. Do we have that angle or are we looking for the angle? Okay, do we know the arc? Yes. What's the arc? 120. What's the name of the arc? RT. RT. It doesn't include S because S is the what? The vertex of the angle. And it's not central because it's not in the middle, so it must be inscribed. So if this is 120, what's this angle? 60. 60. Good. So it's half of it. Right? And that's it with inscribed angles. That's it. Right? You just have to figure out half of it. But sometimes they're going to be a little more convoluted than that. So the second one says the mark, the measure of the arc SU. So arc SU is right here. So then what angle do we have? Arc. What angle is that? SRU. Okay, SRU. And SRU is 40, which means arc SU is what? 80. 80. Good. Okay, it's 80. So if this angle, RST, is 60, and this angle is 40, could you figure this one out? Yes. yes. How? Subtract uh, from 180. So 180 minus 100, right? Which gives you 80. So then could you tell me RS? Angles RS. What do you mean? Right angle. What do you mean? Right? I mean, no, 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 no. Uh, 
Is it central? Oh, we, oh, we can do the area, the area. We could make, yeah, we could make it the area. But is it a central angle? No. no. Is it inscribed? No. No, because it doesn't go all the way across. So we don't have anything there that's going to help us figure that out. Okay, so that one you might not be able to do. So just be careful that you know you're talking about either central angles or inscribed angles, and it doesn't necessarily go with other just random angles. Okay, so again, a corollary is just something that follows from that. So one of the corollaries that follows from that is if inscribed angles all intersect the same arc, then they are all equal. So see how this green angle and this red angle and this blue angle all start and end around arc AB? Yes, no. <laughs> yes. Yes? yes? Okay. So they all are intersecting that arc AB. That means angle C, D, and E must be what? Congruent. Because if they intersect the same arc, then it means that they must be congruent to each other. Okay? Because they are congruent to the same arc. Can you guys like put your phones away? I'm going to start taking them. And I'm going to give them to the dean, and then you're going to have to deal with that. You are in class. You should not have headphones in. You should not have your phones out. Thank you. Okay. Try this one. Is this what's kind of like interior angles? Because they're all in Yeah, like the inscribed is kind of like interior. Yeah, they're all going to be inside. Because that would be inside the angle. Yep. Okay. An inscribed angle subtends a semicircle, and subtends just means that's the angle it covers. Subtends a semicircle if and only if the angle is a right angle. So essentially, what that means is an inscribed angle. How many degrees would this be? 180. 180. So then this angle has to be what? 90, 90 which makes it a right. right angle. Okay? So even if you don't have this marked, if you know that this is a diameter, which you do because it goes through the, the center, center, it goes right through the center, that must be a diameter, and therefore this has to be 180. So that angle has to be 90. It's the same as saying it's half of the measure. You just don't have this written here. You just have to assume that because it's a semicircle, it's 180, therefore the angle is 90. I'm not even on these. I have my hand. It's lit up. Can I have it? Okay, I'm on it. Can I have it? For what? I wasn't on it, so I'm not Okay, then you won't miss it if it's on my desk. Find X then here. Why don't you do it with 180? So if you do 4X plus 6 equals 20? It doesn't equal 180, but it does in it subtends subtend 180, so that means this angle is how many degrees? 90. 90. So then what does this equal? 90. 90. Good. So then 4X plus 6 has to equal 90. Okay? So if this is 180, and it has to be 180 because this is a what? Right. So that's a semicircle because RT has to be a diameter. So then that's 180, which means this has to be 90. All right, so then what would you do? You subtract 6. And you get 4x equals? Okay, and then how many times is 4 going to 84? 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 4. 1. X equals 21. 4 goes into 8 twice, 4 goes into 1 once. So x equals 21. Good. Yeah, yeah. I don't understand why it equals 1. Because What's this arc? 180. How do you know? Because half, half of a circle. So if this is 180, what's the inscribed angle? Half of it. Half of it. And what's half of 180? Oh. 90. So it has to be 90. So if it intersects a semicircle, then it has to be one. It has to be a 180 degree semicircle. So it has to be a 90 degree angle. Okay. All right. <clears throat> These two would have to be what? So they would have to be equal to each other because they both subtend what arc? Arc AC. AC, yeah. So they both intersect arc AC, so then they would have to be the same. So what would you do with 7y minus 1 and 10y minus 28? You subtract them? You don't want to subtract them. Yeah, they're equal to each other. They have to be the same. So then I would do what with 28? Add it, which gives me... 
27. And then what would I do with 7y? Yep, which gives me what? 3y. 3y. So then y must equal 9. Good. Y has to equal 9. So then if I need to find angle ABC, what do I do? Plug it into which one? To ABC. ABC doesn't matter which one though? Because they have to be what? Equal to each other, so it doesn't matter which one. So 9 times 7 is 63. Minus 1 is 62. Which should be the same as up here. What's 10 times 9? 9 minus 20 is just guess. It's got to be 62. Okay. We're going to skip this because I don't think we have time. But yeah, this one? Yes. So 7, we're looking for this arc right here. So we've got this arc right here. I know that all together, what's this? 180. 180, which means, do I have a 90 degree angle somewhere? Yes. Where? Next to E, 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 E. An angle needs to have three letters. F, E, F, E, F, E, B, so this is 90. Okay, all right, so that one's 90. I know this is 35, so can I figure out this one then? Yes. 35. Minus 90. Minus 90, which is 55. So this is 55. All right. So if that's 55, then this arc should be 110. Wait, could you just do 35 times 2? No, because that's 70. It does say you don't know that it's got to count. Oh, okay. So where did I go? 110 is for real one. Because what's 55 times 2? So 55, or 55 plus 55. Okay, so how do we know this one was 90? Because it went across the semicircle. So this right here was the semicircle, which means that's 180, so that had to be 90. And if that's 90, if this is 35, that must be 35. So then 110 would be? The arc. So it's asking you for PD's arc measure, which is 110. Okay. All right. The last theorem we're going to talk about today that has to do with inscribed angles is if a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, then its opposite angles are supplementary. This is just true about quadrilaterals, right, that we talked about so far, so parallelograms, rectangles. Opposite angles are supplementary. That means that they have to add up to what? 180. 180. So A and C add up to 180, and D and B add up to 180. All together, what does a quadrilateral add up to? 360. So if they add up to 180, then that means in here, this is a quadrilateral, Q, P, S, R. Which angles are opposite each other? S, S, S and Q, Q, Q and P and, P and R. So which ones have to add up to 180? P and R. P and R. Why can't we use S and Q? Because it's Good, because we don't have S, right? Could we do it if they gave us S? Yeah, it doesn't matter which one you would use, but because they're only giving us PR, we have to use those. Okay, so then we would say 6y plus 1 plus 10y plus 19 equals what? 180. 180, good. All right, what do I do here? Which gives me what? 16y. 16y plus 20 equals 180. 16y equals? So then y has to equal 10. So if y equals 10, and I want to find the angle measures of PQRS, that means I need to find what angles? If it says find the angle measures, that means you have to find how many? All of them. Okay, we have to find all four. So I'm going to plug in 10. 6 times 10 is? 60. Plus 1? 61. Okay. Six, or 10 squared is? 100. 100 plus 48. And then 10 times 10 is? Plus 19. Okay, how would I find S? Add them all up and subtract from 360, or just subtract which one from 180? Which one? Q. Because Q and S have to be supplementary. So 180 minus 148 would be 32. 32 degrees. Okay, so in an inscribed quadrilateral, which again, inscribed essentially just means inside. All right, inside but with the endpoints on the 
edge of the circle. So not just like a random square inside a circle that doesn't touch, but a quadrilateral inscribed in the circle. Opposite angles will add up to 180. Rosie. You, you add I think divided by 2 to get 32? No, to get 32, you know that this angle and this angle are supplementary, so they have to add up to what? 180. 180, so you just do 180 minus 140. Oh. Or what you could do is add all three of these and subtract that from 360, because the quadrilateral will always add up to 360. Okay, let's take a look at just one of these. Pick one, Mariah, 14, 15, or 16? 15, okay, 15. So in 15, what would you do first? What do you know here? It's a quadrilateral. It's a quadrilateral? So opposites are? 180. 180, okay, why is this one gonna be a challenge? Because there's two different, there's X's and Y's. So what would we do? No, everything equals 360. Everything equals 360? Okay, we can do that. So 10X plus 10X minus 6 plus 4 plus 18Y plus 16Y plus 6. All of that equals what? 360. All right, what like terms can I combine? 10x, 10x. Which gives us? 10x. Okay, what else? 18 plus 16 is? 2, 34. 34y. Wait, what did you say? 16 and 18. Okay. And then what? Negative 6. Negative 6, positive 6. What happens with those? Negative 6 gone. So all we have left is? Okay. This is great, but I still have two variables. Would you have to factor? Maybe. If you're gonna factor it, what would you have to get by itself? Well, you have to yeah. equal it out to the Okay. Can we do that if we have two variables in this book? No? Wait, what are we trying to figure Wait, out? We're trying to figure out x and y. Yeah, then you just subtract the 16 and it only changes Okay, but then you still have what variables? X and y, which doesn't, like you would need an x squared and an x. So is there a different way we can do it? So that's one that's one equation we have, right? So let's keep that in mind. But we also said, you guys said from the beginning, what can you do with L and N? L and N has to equal what? 180. 180. So we can also say, this. we can also say 10X plus 16Y plus six equals what? 180. 180. Okay, what if I isolate a variable here? Can I get x or y by itself? If you did twice. Probably, yeah, I might end up with a fraction. Well, pick a variable, which one do you think it would be easier? Y. Probably x, because divided by 10 is usually easier. So what do I do with 16y and 6? Subtract. Subtract it. So 10x equals 180 minus 16y minus 6. What's 180 minus 6? Uh, 174. So 174 minus 16y. And then how would I get x by itself? All right, what is 174 divided by 10? Uh, 17. And what's 16 divided by 10? Yeah, you just move the decimal over. Okay, now what can I do with this? Oh, you plug that back. Plug that back into which equation? The same one. Not the same one, because that'll just give me oh. my this other one that I have over here, right? This other one that I have over here, I'm going to take out x, and what am I going to plug in? Would you distribute? This, yeah, you distribute 20. So 20, parentheses, 17.4 minus 1.6y plus 34y plus 4 equals 360. All right. Wait, how come you're not doing it with all of them? Because oh, I'm only putting it in for the x, oh, okay. yeah. So I'm only putting it in for the x. So multiplying by 20, so 170 or 17.4 times 20. Is 348. And then seven or 1.6 times 20. Is 32. All 
All right, now what from here? You combine the 32 and the 34. Yeah, which is going to make it a lot easier, right? Because now negative 32 plus 34 leaves me with how many y's? 2y. It only leaves me with 2y. 348 plus 4 is? 342. So 2y, and then what do I do with this? Subtract. Which leaves me with? 8. So y must equal? 4. Good. So y equals 4. And now you don't have to do any more algebra, because that was a lot of algebra. But you don't have to do any more, because if y equals 4, what's, um, where am I going to plug that in? Y. And as soon as I plug it in down here and get an actual number, the other one I'm going to be able to solve for x a lot more easily. So 16 times 4 is 64. 64. Plus 6 is 70. So if this is 70, what's this? 1, 10, which means what does x have to be? 11. x must be 11. Okay, and then if y equals 4, well, we can do this one first. What's 10 times 11? 120. 10 times 11. 110. 110 minus 6 is 104. And then how would you get this one? 180 minus 104, which should be 76. Good. Okay, there's a lot of work going into that. Yes. They will not be that hard. Oh, All right, it's a hard one. All right, 14 mm -hmm. would have been simpler. Why would 14 have been easier? There's only, there's only one variable. Only has x. So these two have to add up to what? I'll blame Mariah for that one, but I put it on there, so really it's my fault. Okay, so if you had to do that, that is what you would have to do. For the most part, you won't have to do them quite like that. They're just going to be inscribed angles. Point is, inscribed angles are how much of the whole arc? Half. Half of the whole arc. What's the difference between an inscribed angle and a central angle? Central vertex is the center. Center, vertex is the central angle, and inscribed means outside. outside. They're all on the outside. All three points of the arc and the angle are on the outside. All right, do the exit ticket. Just do 1AB and 3A. Don't worry about 4.